Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.7 and Polychop Simulations SA342L Gazelle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 1, Startup. Now that the Gazelle has been so thoroughly updated, I thought it would be a good time to revisit my series on it. And we're starting today with Startup. Uh, so yeah, in the most recent updates we have had a big flight model update, we have an external model update with PBR textures. We now have a tablet on board. We have a brand new site on the L model in the form of the Athos Periscope site. Uh, the M model retains its Vivian uh, day-night site. Uh, the Athos is a daytime-only site. With the most recent update, it now actually gains a laser rangefinder, which makes it really useful. Uh, and we have some new weapons. We've also had some variants of the helicopter condensed into the L model. So the Mistral version of the helicopter has now been removed, and you can simply mount the Mistral on the L model. If I bring up the ground crew just now, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, I currently have rockets and the original GIAT M621 20mm cannon. Uh, however, you now have the ability to also fit the FN HMP400, which is a 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, you also have the option to mount the HOT-3 missile on the L model, which is very nice. And here we have the Mistral, uh, so no need to have the dedicated Mistral version anymore. Uh, we also have the infrared deflector installed today, and the dipole antenna, which is aesthetic only. But it was fitted on the British Harriers, at least, I'm certain. Uh, and yes, the, you know this is a this is a fairly kind of you know, well well deployed helicopter it's still in service in fact with the british army and the french army uh, among many many others and it's been in service since 1967 uh, it's used in the light transport scout and light attack roles and it's a, a fairly capable small fast maneuverable helicopter one of my favorite helicopters in the game in fact it's really nice to see it get this update before the kiwa the original plan was that polychop would put some effort into updating the Gazelle after the launch of the Kiowa. Uh, but I think they, they were listening to feedback from uh, people that they wanted to see it uh, improved before then. So it's nice to see them do so. Yeah, and it is very much improved. But anyway, without any further ado, let's uh, go ahead and start up the helicopter. So in the checklist, the very first thing that we should do is close the doors. We're then going to establish power to the helicopter. I'll actually let me just hide my pilot body, but I'll leave the gunner in place. Um, so yeah, to establish power, we've got these three switches here. Battery master goes on, alternator goes on, generator goes on, and that's power established to the helicopter. Uh, next, before engine start, I'm going to put on uh, position lights and normal anti-collision. And if I come to the external view, you can now see those lights are on. That gives the ground crew a nice little warning that something's about to happen. Uh, now, for actual engine start, this is the start panel down here. So we look at this. Uh, we have the starter switch itself. We have the electric fuel pump. We have a clock. And we have the RPM gauge, which shows us on the inside the uh, rotor RPM and on the outside the turbine RPM. Here we have the exhaust gas temperature. And then up here, we actually have the oil temperature, which is kind of useful. So yeah, this is oil. This is fuel uh, in tens of litres. We currently have 400 and something, 420 litres maybe here, and battery voltage. So uh, first thing we do is we turn on the electric pump and then we start the clock. We want to be running that electric pump for 20 seconds before we attempt an engine start. So we'll hang by and wait for that to happen. Uh, approaching the 15 second mark now, a few more seconds, and then to actually action the start, we move the starter from Arete to Marche. It also has a vent position, uh, and that allows you to do a, a, a dry uh, start without actually introducing fuel. We're going to go Marche. We want to see this green light here, that means the starter is engaged. We should also see turbine RPM increasing. That's going to stabilize at around about 25,000 RPM. And while we're waiting for that, we're going to disengage the rotor brake. This red handle here goes all the way forward and it's off. And turbine still coming up. Once the turbine has stabilized, we'll start to introduce fuel. We're going to move this lever to about here. 
at which point we should start to get rotor movement. We haven't got it yet, I'm going to give it a bit more fuel. And there we go, rotor is now turning. You can see the fenestrin tail spinning up as well. So back into the cockpit we want to monitor the RPM gauge. We want to wait until the rotor stabilizes wherever it chooses to do so. It should be somewhere close to here. There we go, that's it stabilized there. Once we have that RPM stabilized we can then start slowly increasing fuel until we have the fuel lever full. And that's it. Uh, you can see that both the turbine and the rotor RPM are now in the green. That spun up the generator, so the warning lights for the generator and the alternator have now gone out. So that's a good engine start and we have internal power. We can now start powering on systems. So first thing we do is turn on the pitot heat, that gets rid of the pitot warning. We're then going to turn on the trim system. Now there are actually two separate trim systems in the helicopter. This trim switch here turns on the, the beep trim, uh, that's the, the trim hat that's on the cyclic. Uh, we also have this one here labelled Debre F. This is actually the magnetic brake. If we turn on this one, this is the normal kind of helicopter trim system where you've got a button that you hold down, you do your manoeuvre and then you release the button. So that's both trim systems engaged. Uh, we're now going to turn on the uh, gyro compass system by putting this switch into the GM position. Uh, the compass will take a bit of time to spin up and then we will get on indications in both the gyro and the amplifier windows here instead of the, the flags that we currently have. Autopilot can now come on. We have channels down here for pitch, roll and yaw. They can all be turned on and then the autopilot master switch can go on. And that's the autopilot system fully powered. Uh, that makes the autopilot warning on the warning and caution panel go out. Uh, so that system's now ready to use. You normally fly the gazelle with the autopilot on at all times. That's the, the standard way of flying it. Uh, you do have the option of turning it off though if you would like. Uh, next we're going to fire up the radar altimeter. Uh, this little knob here, we roll our mouse wheel on it to go from Arete to Marche. Uh, the altitude, the radar altimeter is now powered on, and then we can use this uh, knob here to set the dangerous altitude. Uh, I've set 30 meters as our warning on there. Next, attitude indicator can come on. Oh, there we go, the gyro compass just spun up. If we push and hold the erect button, the gyro, the attitude indicator, sorry, will uh, erect. It's now fully erect. And the backup attitude indicator, we can push this in and roll the mouse wheel until the pitch bars are level with the horizon. That's the backup attitude indicator powered up as well. Uh, next, we move on to navigational equipment. The Nadir here is the INS system in the helicopter. It's the primary mode of navigation. Uh, currently, the master mode switches in a ret, which is for off. We move it into VL, which is standby, and the system will now go through an automatic uh, alignment. It currently shows error, uh, nav system not ready, and error data system not ready. We're going to wait for those lights to go out before we proceed. Next, we're going to turn on our radios. Uh, I can actually click on the collective to hide it. That's a new feature in this version. We've got three radios in the helicopter. UHF radio is here. We simply put its mode selector to FF, and that makes it ready to use. Further up here, we have the standard VHF AM radio. We simply right-click on the right-hand knob's collar to move it from Arete to Marche, and we get a green light. That's the VHF powered. I'm now going to press number two to jump to the gunner's seat, and in the gunner's seat, I'm going to power up the VHF FM radio. We simply move its master mode to traffic, and it will then default to 30 megahertz FM. I can hit one to return to the pilot seat. Uh, next, I'm going to turn on the countermeasure system. Uh, it's got a switch for the master mode down here. It has settings for off, fast, and slow. We're going to move it one uh, click into the fast mode, and you'll see that the status lights all come on. Uh, you also have an option here to switch it between one and sequence. Uh, we're leaving it in one just now. Uh, so, system's ready to use. Uh, by this point, the... Nadir should be ready. All the warning lights have gone out, so we can move it from standby to Ter, which is for land operation. It also has a setting for Mer, which is for sea operation, but today we're going to be flying over land. 
Oh, I almost forgot the starter. Once uh, the engine start is complete, we can put it back into a red. We're no longer using the starter. And I can also stop the timer and reset it, just in case we want to use that again at some point. And that is a, a kind of complete normal startup. I'll take you through a couple of additional items, though. Uh, if we click, if we click here, we can unfold the tablet. And if I press the home button on the tablet, the tablet will boot up. That takes just a little bit of time uh, for it to come online. I also have the NS430 navigator, which is an optional add-on for this module. Uh, if you have this, you can power it on by increasing the comm volume, and you'll then get a, a loading indication here. You can press enter, it'll give you some um, self-test information. You can press enter again, and then you'll get the moving map, and you can range that in and out. Nice thing about this system, just like the Nadir, if you set any kind of a flight plan in the mission editor, it will be displayed here. So we've got uh, waypoint 1 and waypoint 2 indicated on here. Also, if you use the inner knob on the right-hand side, uh, one click on that puts you into terrain um, avoidance mode. There it color codes terrain based on altitude. I find this quite useful. Uh, also, we've got a flashing message. If we go into message and hit clear, we can clear that message. So that's the NS430 ready to use. Tablet has now booted up as well. I can click on the tablet to flip between the F10 map and the chart. And we also have options at the bottom left for zoom and at the bottom right for brightness. Quite useful if you're going to use this at night. And you can click here again to actually fold it away. So, uh, basic navigation with the Nadir, uh, by default it's going to drive the uh, thick pointer on your HSI and you also get a range in kilometres to that waypoint. You can change the waypoint you're currently tracking by clicking on the keypad of the Nadir. We currently have waypoint 1 selected, as we can see here. It's showing a lat and a long for that position. I can press 2 to select waypoint 2 and you see that the fat pointer moved and the, the distance to that waypoint changed. Uh, but I'm going to put it back on waypoint 1. The other navigational system we can have on the HSI is ADF. Uh, we actually have a beacon nearby on 435 kilohertz. So if I simply tune in the window here to 435, to get that correct, there we go. I can then put the master mode into ADF mode, and you'll then note that the skinny pointer has moved away. Normally it will sit at the 3 o'clock stowed position when it's not receiving a signal. It's now swung uh, out to, what is that, 06... 065, uh, and that's pointing directly towards that ADF station. So that will take you directly there. Another thing I tend to do is put the artificial, sorry, the um, attitude indicator here. It has a mood switch here. Um, I usually put that into Doppler mode, and that will give me bars which show me my deviation across the ground using the Doppler navigation system. And there you go. That is a complete startup of the Gazelle. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. If you haven't already, you also have the option of joining Deepak's ground crew by clicking the join button below. That's a really big help to me and to the channel. It's a small monthly fee, and I really appreciate those of you who've already done so. Thank you very much, Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, GR Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdinker Tan, Tiger Muto, Sean I Am 81, Charts, John Bloor, Belly Tapani Korpikanas, Mike Delta, Sergei Dubrovic, uh, Ogatai 36, Hamilton, Frantic Stone, Sandbox Code, Mr. Craptacular, Tog, Rocklin Gaming, Tea Kettle Barbecue, Schmo 78, Alex, Colonel Billington, Matt, Fludidi, Jürgen Dressel, Aaron Redman, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.